What's up guys, Velocity back with another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. And in today's quick video, you're gonna learn how to import Quixel Megascan textures from the Fab Marketplace. Let's get into it. Just before we hop into the tutorial, if you guys like what we do here at Pitchfork Academy, the number one way to support us is to check out our new game, Skyblocker, which we just released on Steam. It's a fun and competitive 3D puzzle game where you battle the elements and gravity. It's complete with awesome unlockable block skins, multiple levels, and a global online leaderboard to compete with your friends and others around the world. I hope you enjoy it as much as we enjoyed making it. Now let's get into the tutorial. I'm here in Unreal Engine 5.6, and if we wanted to get some mega scan textures from Fab for free, we'll need to go to Fab, and to do that, we'll go to the Window tab at the top and just go down until you see Fab. And then once we're here, um, we can just go ahead and search at the top for Quixel. And then it'll have all of the Quixel assets available, anything from entire scenes all the way to specific assets like a rock or a tree. And then we'll obviously as well have the materials. Um, but what we can do is filter by materials and textures only on the left. So I'll click that. And right away you can see all of the materials that Quixel has to offer. But unfortunately, when they switched from the Quixel Bridge plugin method to Fab, they did raise the price on some of the materials. For example, a lot of these are 99 cents, but there's still a ton that are free. So we can filter by uh, price here. So I'll click that and then click free. And then as you can see, there's still a ton of free mega scan textures here. The list just goes on and on. And as you scroll down, it will just keep updating and updating. So in my opinion, there's plenty enough textures here for your projects, no matter what you need. There's, for example, tons of types of grass and rock and brick, and really anything that you need is all here um, and for free. So what we can do is maybe just choose one of these. I'll choose this rocky forest floor here. And as you can see, it gives us some examples of what it looks like. I like clicking on the final texture. I get a good view of what this texture is going to look like when you're sort of zoomed out from the ground, just to see how repetitious this texture is. I like to stick to some that are um, not as repetitious. So for example, in my opinion, this one's pretty good. The only repetition I really see is this big rock here, but when you're zoomed out and you maybe blend this with another texture, you can hardly even notice. So on the right here, you'll notice that we have a quality dropdown and the high quality is going to be the one that I recommend, which is going to be 4096. The raw quality is 8K or 8192. Medium quality is 2K or 2048. Uh, and low quality is 1024 or 1K. Um, unless you're doing cinematic or film, I don't recommend raw quality. Um, but if you are, then I definitely um, would go ahead and get the raw quality for the highest possible um, textile density. Uh, but raw qualities should be good for most realistic game projects as you can always downscale the texture in engine however if you are going for a stylized look you can probably get away with medium quality i'll just get the medium quality and then i'll click add the project it'll ask me to accept an agreement i'll just go ahead and do that then it will automatically download the textures and create a folder for us in our projects so if i go back to content you'll see there's a new folder here called fab I'll just double click that. Then we'll have mega scans in here and then surfaces. Um, but if I go back one level, next to surfaces is where it would appear if you had a, uh, for example, if you had a rock or something like that, it might say meshes or assets or something like that. But the materials should all be in surfaces. And then here's where all of your different materials will be. So here we have the rocky forest floor and then the high quality, that's the one that we selected to download. And then here's the actual folder for the textures and material. So the textures will be in this folder here. And then the material is right here. So this is um, an example of the material that they give from Megascans. It uses the Megascan master material. In my opinion, it's not that great because um, it doesn't have as much customization as you might like. And for example, if I drag this onto this object here, onto the ramp, you can see it's a totally different scale and doesn't look that great. So I definitely recommend going and checking out my Megascan Master Material video where I show how to set up a blended Megascan material where you can blend two different Megascan textures together, as well as have puddles sort of lay inside the crevices of the height map from those two textures combined. And it also shows how to set up Nanite Displacement, which looks really, really great. But I definitely recommend going to check that out. There'll be a card for that in the top right of the video. Um, but for now, I'll just show uh, sort of how these textures are set up. So. I'll go back and go into the texture folder and you'll notice that there's four textures here. So we have the base 
color, which is looking good. And then we have the height texture. You'll notice that this is just a separate texture and um, it's not packed into the mask texture. In the old Quixel Megascan plugin, there was um, usually they had the height maps built into the OR texture. It used to be called an ORD. So you might be used to that, but now it is its own standalone texture. And then we have the normal map here, pretty standard, and then the ORM texture. This stands for occlusion or ambient occlusion, and then roughness, and then metallic. So if I uncheck the G and the B channel, we can see just the red channel, which is the ambient occlusion. That's the sort of self-shadowing inside the crevices of the rocks. That's pretty great. And then the G channel, that's the roughness. You can see some slight uh, variation in there for how rough the surface should be. And then the metallic. You'll notice that this is totally blank. And for a natural surface like rocks or grass, um, this probably will always be blank because it doesn't have anything to do with metal. But usually the height texture would be packed into there. So it used to be O, um, O, R, and then D for displacement, which is another word for height. But unfortunately they separated them. I think it's because they want to make sure that no matter what material you're getting, maybe it's a, um, a wooden floor that has some metal nails in it. They, you know, that would be in the, you would see little nail heads here in this texture. So they, they did it so it's all combined into one system. But if you guys are interested in learning how to create a pack texture, for example, like this texture here, this ORM with the different things in the different channels, leave a comment down below. I can definitely make a video on that subject. It's called texture packing. And if you're working with natural surfaces, for example, landscape or just some ground materials, it might be worth learning how to pack your height texture back into the OR texture instead of the metallic. So just leave a comment down below if that's something that you're interested in learning about. Um, but we can continue on here. So I'll um, really quickly, I'll go back to fab and we'll just get another example texture. And I can filter this even more. So at the top, I'll just hit a space after Quixel and I'll type in metal. Then we can search for some more um, metallic surfaces just to showcase a reason why they have that ORM texture. I'll just get this corrugated metal sheet. High quality should be selected because that's what I had selected last time. And then I'll click add to project. Again, it will download it and then create a new folder. And then I'll just go back to services so we can see where I put it. So it's just next to our uh, forest floor. You can see it put it next to that. So go into there, high quality, and then textures. Uh, but real quickly, I can just drag that um, showcase material onto the ground here. So you can see it's much more metallic than the dirt, of course. And then if I go back to the textures folder, we can see all of the textures are here. The height map, the normal and then we have the ORM. Now this is an example of why they have the ORM packed together, because here's the occlusion, there's the roughness. And then in this example, we do have some information for metallic. So anything that's white here would mean that it's fully metallic and anything that's black is not. I'm assuming the black is some rust spots and then the white is just the uh, default metal. So that's again why they pack the ORM together because some of the textures that you get from Fab will need that information to look correct. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this video on how to import free Megascan textures into your Unreal Engine 5 projects from the Fab Marketplace. If you are interested in taking your Megascan textures to the next level, I definitely recommend checking out my Megascan material video where I go in depth on how to improve them and blend them together and even add puddles into the crevices based on the height map and all sorts of extra cool stuff. If you learned anything new from this video, it'd mean a lot to us if you left a like and subscribe to our channel and definitely go check out Skyblocker on Steam. We promise you won't regret it. This has been Velocity with Pitchfork Academy and I'll see you in the next one.